significant. Let's Thank finish you, this. Okay, Thanks very much. Ready to join Kusi Communist Party. Okay. This council's primary responsibility. So now, uh, Blinken, okay, is addressing the UN Security Council amid the Russian threat. The Security Council was called, ironically, by Russia. The very reason for its creation is the preservation of peace and security. As we meet today, the most... Talking about Putin's mansion last year got his primary political opponent poisoned and jailed. <laughs> I know. I know. Immediate threat to peace and security is Russia's looming aggression against Ukraine. Unironically defending Russian oligarchs? Wait, what? Me? Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? No, I'm not. The stakes go far beyond Ukraine. This is a moment of peril for the lives and safety of millions of people, he got as well as for the foundation of the United Nations Charter and the rules-based international order that preserves stability worldwide. This crisis directly affects every member of this council and every country in the world. Because the basic principles that sustain peace and security Principles that were enshrined in the wake of two world wars and a cold war are under threat. Captions are fire. That one country cannot change the borders of another by force. The principle that one country cannot dictate another's choices or policies or with whom it will associate. That's that's fucking cool. Wait, what? Where is this coming from? Oh. That's that's wonderful that, you know, the American government is saying that. Can you how can you say that? Like, dude, you're the secretary of state of the United States of America, dude. Like, how can you say that? How can you actually fucking with a straight face say that? It's so the funniest part about this always is like. How are you allowed to say that? And then people are just like, yeah, that's true. You're, you're right. No one would do that. I mean, we're, we're currently doing that to uh, North Korea. We're doing that to Cuba. We're doing that to Venezuela. We've done literally uh, just that numerous fucking times uh, throughout history in the aftermath of the World War II by using World War II. Think about Israel. Crazy. Crazy. Th that is, this argument is awesome because it's like, Anthony Blinken is basically just saying, we are allowed to do that, okay? Months, no one else is allowed to do that. We, we are allowed to do that. The principle of national sovereignty. This is the exact kind of crisis that the United Nations, and specifically this Security Council, was created to prevent we must address what Russia is doing right now to Ukraine. All those countries you've listed have a human rights problem, Lamau. Wait, what? Dude, stop. You're not a fucking 13-month subscriber who just decided to chime in right now and say that, like, Cuba, North Korea, and Venezuela have human rights problems, and, and therefore it's justifiable. Stop. I want to fucking, I, I, I just, I never want to stream again, dude. I, I think I'm so sick of, I am so fucking sick of these American exceptionalist weirdos. No shot. This dude is being serious. Thanks for continuously debunking the narratives pushed by those in power. You've successfully converted me over the past couple of years. And given where I stood at the start, I have hope that I can do the same for some of my friends. I just, I give up when I see stuff like this. I just, I give up. I, I don't know what to say. You, you got me, dude. Over the past months, without provocation or justification, Russia has amassed Ukraine more than 150,000 troops around Ukraine's borders. Goes on. In Russia, Belarus, occupied Crimea. 
Russia says it's drawing down those forces. We do not see that happening on the ground. Our information indicates clearly that these forces, Nine months including ever. ground troops, aircraft, ships, are preparing to launch an attack against Ukraine in the coming days. We don't know precisely how things will play out, but here's what the world can expect to see unfold. In fact, it's unfolding right Thank now. You, Sam. Me and Today, the wives love watching you and you as Russia takes steps down the path joy, to war thanks for helping and reissues the threat of military action. First, Russia plans to manufacture a pretext for its attack. This could be a violent event that Russia will blame on Ukraine or an outrageous accusation that Russia will level against the Ukrainian government. We don't know exactly the form it will take. It could be a fabricated so-called terrorist bombing inside Russia. The invented discovery of a mass grave, and a staged drone strike against civilians, or a fake, even a real, attack using chemical weapons. Russia may describe this event as ethnic cleansing or a genocide, making a mockery of a concept that we in this chamber do not take lightly. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Who keeps routinely saying that Israel is not an apartheid state again? We don't take that lightly, okay? We would never, we would never take genocide lightly unless it's literally happening in Yemen with our weapons uh, uh, done by our greatest ally in the region, uh, Saudi Arabia. That's, f dude, come on. Well, bad Hussein, good. He's, it's like, it's like, is it pure projection? I, I don't know how else to describe it, like... It's so fucking strange that, like, the Secretary of State of the United States of America can, like, assume this position when we are the genocidal of warmongers of the world. Like, we, we are, straight up. Like, all these, other, all these other countries are, like, you know, they're babies at doing the things that we do on a regular basis. We've Crazy. been talking about this for days, but Grain I am still advocate for corporate colonialism as a consequence of NATO membership also at Hassanabai. Nor do I take lightly, based on my family history. In the past few days, Russian media has already begun to spread some of these false alarms and claims to maximize public outrage, to lay It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, they're doing propaganda, for sure, okay? Of course they are. Of course they are. So are we, right? The difference is, we're doing propaganda to the rest of the fucking world. Russia is doing propaganda to its own citizens. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because they're not going to invade Ukraine, okay? But we're the ones who are making it seem like they are, and they definitely are, and they're going to do it tomorrow, and they're going to do it the day after, and they're going to do it a week after. Oops, didn't happen. Well, they're going to do it next week. Okay? That's the issue in this circumstance. Wait, what does it say? No, we don't do... We don't have any propaganda. No, totally. Totally. All of that. The, the fact that uh, our State Department is able to have a direct line of communication with every fucking American news outlet who turns around and repeats everything that anonymous sources in the State Department are saying without ever questioning it. Without ever fucking even, you know, second guessing, questioning it, applying any sort of critical thinking to it. It's, it's wild. And then we turn around and we go, no, that warmongering was actually, that warmongering propaganda, that was good. That was literally good. We were doing it for the reason. We were doing it. I mean, I, I liked Glenn Greenwald's takes on this. I'm sorry. He's right about this. They're not even hiding it this time. The vast, vast majority of reporting from corporate media outlets on Russia, Ukraine consists of nothing other than anonymous intelligent officials tells us. No verification, questioning, or doubt. They just go and proselytize as told. He's right on this. In these two tweets, Julia Ioff, long one of the most fanatical and deranged Russia gators, comes out and explicitly says not only that the U.S. media is being used to spread propaganda by the U.S. government about Ukraine, but that it's noble and they're being used, uh, that they're being used this way. Finally, Glenn Greenwald is criticizing the media for once about, like, an actual adequate issue rather than fucking crying about, like, I don't know, whatever the fuck he does all the time. Like, that he's he just... Rather than crying about, like, fucking how 
you know, random bread tubers or DNC operatives or some shit. Jesus fucking Christ. I do not think that they will do a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, but don't you think they might try to make play for Donetsk area and make a similar claim to what happened in Crimea? That is what I see them making play at. Also agreeing with Glenn Grimald Papela? Yeah, I know. The Biden admin used the media to pile pressure on Russia and it worked? Yeah, totally. Totally, dude. Send, please yeah. Call my mom they back. were, they were, she I swear it was going to be different this time. They were had. definitely going to invade. I'll be a good you can never agree with someone who is usually wrong. Yes. I mean, he is. He usually is very, very wrong. And, uh, you know, focus on all the silliest shit. Anyway, a broken clock is right twice a day. So, yeah, with all the alarm about a Russian invasion of Ukraine, it's important to keep in mind that the alarm itself and using the U.S. media to keep the alarm ringing is part of the Biden administration's strategy to keep pressure on the Kremlin. It is the strategy. Oh, so like just lying to the people and saying that Russia is going to invade tomorrow, which is significantly undermining people's trust in the media. Well, unless you're like a fucking weirdo who... Uh, it just watches, uh, you know, blood sport debates on the on the Internet and only covers politics from a point of like fucking fancy and rarely ever co considers the, the genuine consequences that uh, that the people on the ground will actually have to suffer. Unless you're one of those guys, you literally look at this and you go, OK, well, this is fucked up. And there's that. And by the way, for the record, there is a reason why. You know, the, the overwhelming majority of Americans don't give a fuck about this and think that this is ridiculous, that we should not be fucking, uh, you know, uh, playing world police. You've described 90% of the electorate. That's not, tr you think 90% of the electorate are fucking looking at this like team sports? No, 90% of the electorate doesn't give a shit. What the fuck's wrong with you? This, okay, this is only an issue within the blob, okay? This is only an issue within uh, DC, the DMV, okay? And, and also uh, people who have fucking New York Times subscriptions. That's it. This is, this is like whenever the media loves talking about like a fucking another college professor got fired, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you just, you just care about that because the media cares about it and they constantly talk about it. That's it. I've heard not a single person talking about this other than the news and my lib friend who thinks Putin is going to be Hitler too. Yeah, and that's why there are polls that show that the overwhelming majority of Americans do not want to intervene in this situation. Okay. Basic Hawk, uh, thank you for the five get the subs. I agree with so far, but why would Russia propaganda as a false flag attack of their citizens unless they actually wanted to invade, right? Um, I don't know. I think they want to, they want to fucking showcase that, uh, I mean, I think they do that all the time. I think they have nonstop done that. They always do fucking, Thank you, brother. not false flag I attacks, but they always fucking show sure that, uh, the, the brave separatists are fighting an honorable and justifiable war against, uh, the Ukrainian nationalist militias. That's it. It's just, you know. It's reinforcing a, uh, a, a narrative of victimhood. That doesn't mean they're going to fucking, you know, that doesn't mean they're going to invade this time because they've been doing it for so long and they haven't. So. Anyway, uh, not all Ukrainians are loving the strategy to be fair. Yikes, head of Zelensky, servant of the People Party in Parliament, claims Western media hysteria is now costing the country 2 to $3 billion every month. We talked about this yesterday. It's different this time, bro. Yeah, no, trust me, bro. Copium. It's different this time, bro. It's totally different. Yeah. No, the only difference this time is that the media is, like, ramping the fucking narrative and is Keep up your short. asshole. Thank you so much. So you time. think it's different this time. Okay, that's it. I already showed you that they've fucking done this a million times over, over and over and over again. They've done this so many fucking times. They've done this every year. It's just never a story to this degree. And then when they retreat some of those fucking uh, troops on the border, it just quietly goes away. You start focusing on other shit.
took my sub virginity. I'm Georgian, so I'm I have a bias against Russian imperialism, maybe. Massive. No, I, I feel that. I, I understand that. I mean, look, they are so consistently in the wrong. Like, I don't understand why you guys can't fucking see that, you know? They are so consistently in the wrong, but you want to believe that they're fucking right. So you just keep coming in here and telling me that, no, actually, my side of the argument is right. My side of the argument is right. In Washington foreign policy circles, Putin's classic tactic is called escalate to de-escalate. Now the 2.0 version, escalate to de-escalate to escalate. Wow, dude. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's just this... You know, this, this brilliant tactician, dude, he's just doing all of these. The madman, he's just doing all of this to just like, uh, you know, fuck over the, uh, the American, uh, the American media, I guess. We're going to talk about Elon Musk's deleted tweet in a second. Hold on. Uh, I just had to. Dude, how is this any different than like a QAnon people, man? I mean, this person literally is a QAnon uh, a person, but for Russia. And for a, an imminent Russian invasion that just simply has not happened, but it will happen. How do you guys not see that? It's fucking frustrating. Anyway, I can understand their frustration, but getting invaded would probably be worse. Oh, dude, okay. So then, even if an invasion was not going to happen regardless, what you should do, what you should do instead is uh, fucking make it seem like it's happening so you fuck over the Ukrainian economy further. If the corporate media had any minimal standards of ethics or even dignity, this would cause an immediate explosion of Ayaf, or whatever her fucking name is, from any venues of credibility, but most of them not only know that it's true, but also see it as virtuous. As with Trump, all is justified to stop Putin. Genuinely interested in hearing from a defender of corporate media, what's the difference in journalistic mentality and or methods between what they did in the run-up to the Iraq war, from which they supposedly learned so many lessons, and what they're doing now on Ukraine? It's true. This is a fucking correct take by Glenn Greenwald. Okay. He calls me a fucking DC. Uh, he calls me a DNC uh, mouthpiece. He says I'm like fucking backed by the CIA or whatever the fuck all the goddamn time. But he's right on this one. And I did run the ad break, by the way, chatters. I did. Lay the groundwork for an invented justification for war. Today, that drumbeat is only intensified in Russia's state controlled media. We've heard some of these basic allegations from Russian back speakers here today. Getting close to brain rock asshole. I mean, this, this is more blatant than Iraq. They're not even trying. Like, with Iraq, at least they fucking lied. Did Glenn actually say you were CIA back? No, he didn't say I was CIA back. He said I was a, a DNC operative, though. Brother, you and Greenwald are welcome to motherland In response anytime. to this manufactured provocation, the highest brother. levels of the Russian Thank government so much. may theatrically convene emergency meetings to address the so-called crisis. The government will issue proclamations declaring that Russia must respond to defend Russian citizens or ethnic Russians. Nice silver boy. Yeah, dude, months. you know me. My family is Big worried. DNC boy. I keep talking about cars and jelly deal. They want me to stop always using accents. They notice I am on edge at the top of every hour. Next, I keep telling them the attack I make my is own plan to begin. I break my promise to gain more. Russian missiles and bombs will drop across Ukraine. Communications will be jammed. Cyber attacks will shut down key Ukrainian institutions. After that, Russian tanks and soldiers will advance on key targets that have already been identified and mapped out in detailed plans. We believe these targets include Russia's capital, uh, Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, a city of 2.8 million people. And conventional attacks are not all that Russia plans to inflict upon the people of Ukraine. We have information that indicates Russia will target specific groups of Ukrainians. We've been warning the Ukrainian government of all that is coming. And here today, we are laying it out in great detail 
with the hope that by sharing what we know with the world, we can influence Russia to abandon the path of war and choose a different path while there's still time. Now, I'm mindful that some have called into question our information, recalling previous instances where intelligence ultimately did not bear out. But let me be clear. I am here today not to start a war, but to prevent one. The information I presented here is validated by what we've seen unfolding in plain sight before our eyes for months. And remember that while Russia has repeatedly derided our warnings and alarms as melodrama and nonsense, they have been steadily amassing more than 150,000 troops on Ukraine's borders, as well as the capabilities to conduct a massive military assault. It isn't just us seeing this. Allies and partners see the same thing. And Russia hasn't only been hearing from us. The international chorus has grown louder and louder. If Russia doesn't invade Ukraine, then we will be relieved that Russia changed course and proved our predictions wrong. That would be a far better outcome than the course we're currently on. And we'll gladly accept any criticism that anyone directs at us. As President Biden said, Wait, what? Is validated by what we've seen unfolding in plain sight before our eyes. Dude, us lying. Us lying and routinely just like our predictions being routinely off. Actually, that was tactical. We were tactically lying. What we are doing, what we are doing, okay, and, and using the media to do is called tactical lying. You will never be able to lose anything if that's what you're doing, because you're just tactically fucking lying, I guess. It was actually intentional. If your tactical lies worked, okay, and you goaded like uh, Russia into taking action, then you won because they did take action. If your tactical lying doesn't work and Russia doesn't actually take any sort of action, in which case you could just say, we stopped them from taking action by tactically lying. It's fucking crazy. And people hear this. Why don't you stop having these dumb things about Ukraine and have Adam something on to inform you on this subject? Like, what? Dude, nine months of crime or I'm gonna fucking die. We're literally watching. We are watching a fucking, I'm just banning you. We're watching a fucking dude literally on the United Nations Security Council admit that they lied about fucking Russia invading. And they said they were tactically fucking lying. And this dickhead comes in here just to say, dude, have this other YouTube content creator who I agree with because I watched his essay and, you know, that wasn't bad, I don't think. Anyway, let's continue. For months. And remember that while Russia has repeatedly derided our warnings and alarms as melodrama and nonsense, they have been steadily amassing more than 150,000. Okay, for the record, uh, there are 150,000 people, right? Like at, on, the, on the border, right? Yes, dude. It doesn't matter. There was fucking 90,000 last year. There was 80,000. There was 100,000 three years ago. There, that happens every year. It's military exercises that occur every year to do a fucking demonstration of how fucking terrible it would be if Ukraine was no longer a buffer zone, okay? ...thousand troops on Ukraine's borders, as well as the capabilities to conduct a massive military assault. It isn't just us seeing this. Allies and partners see the same thing. And Russia hasn't only been hearing from us. The international chorus has grown louder. And louder. Please go back and wash your hands. I know. I love you. What? Didn't after you peed? I I Incredible. Backseating my fucking uh, habits here. If Russia doesn't invade Ukraine, then we will be relieved that Russia changed course 
and proved our predictions wrong. That would be a far better on a nice note, I was able to point to the media blackout on the Ukrainian uh, telling NATO slash the U.S. to chill out in my media ethics class as an example of flaws in reporting. Your message is getting through. And then your teacher fucking gave you an F probably. Yeah, that's the wild part. Like, these fucking major news websites are never talking about the consequences or uh, ever talking about, like, what the Ukrainian administration is saying. Like, they're like, hey, we're worried about Russian incursion, but, like, can you guys calm the fuck down? We're trying to diplomatically deal with the situation, and you guys are really fucking this up. That has been the, the routine information coming out of Ukraine. Like, literally, over and over again, Ukrainian authorities that we so, we care about the Ukrainian people, right? We care about them, supposedly. That's why we have to fucking turn Ukraine into a one big uh, NATO base, right? And the Ukrainian authorities keep saying, dude, chill the fuck out. And it doesn't even matter. It's like, you never fucking hear that. It's like very rarely covered. You only hear about like the war drums, war drums, war drums. ...outcome than the course we're currently on. And we'll gladly accept any criticism that anyone directs at us. As President Biden said, this would be a war of choice. And if Russia makes that choice, we've been clear, along with allies and partners, that our response will be sharp and decisive. President Biden reiterated that forcefully earlier this week. There's another choice Russia can still make if there's any truth to its claim that is committed to diplomacy. Diplomacy is the only responsible way to resolve this crisis. An essential part of this is through implementation of the Minsk agreements, the subject of our session today. There are a series of commitments that Russia and Ukraine made under Minsk, with the OSCE and the Normandy format partners involved as well. If Russia is prepared to... How are the media brought into the escalate, de-escalate strategy like they are just on the phone with Blinken? That's what I don't get. Mean, dude. Sources, dude. Sources. How do you think journalists cover stories... Anonymous sources within the State Department reach out to the journalists and say, hey, this is what's going on. You should write about this. And then those fucking journalists, instead of being like, hey, this anonymous source said this, we should probably try to fact check it or try to try to figure out where they're getting this information from, literally turn around and go, OK, let's write it up. Without ever. Ever considering how many times they have fucked up when they've done this exact same thing. Iraq is the uh, most prescient example. Sit with the Ukrainian government and work through the process of implementing these commitments. Our friends in France and Germany stand ready to convene senior level discussions in the Normandy format to settle these issues. Ukraine is ready for this and we stand fully ready to support the parties. Progress toward resolving the Donbass crisis through the Minsk agreements can reinforce the broader discussions on security issues that we're prepared to engage in with Russia in coordination with our allies and partners. More than three weeks ago, we provided Russia with a paper that detailed concrete reciprocal steps that we can take in the near term to address our respective concerns and advance the collective security interests of Russia, the United States, and our European partners and allies. This morning, we received a response, which we're evaluating. Earlier today, I sent a letter to Russia's Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, proposing that we meet next week in Europe, following on our talks in recent weeks, to discuss the steps that we can take to resolve this crisis without conflict. We're also proposing meetings of the NATO-Russia Council and the OSCE Permanent Council. These meetings can pave the way for a summit of key leaders in the context of de-escalation to reach understandings on our mutual... Yes, it is access journalism. It's like when the local reporters print what cops want them to because doing what cops or your State Department contracts want means they'll give you more scoops in the future. It's careerism in an unrewarding profession. But it's how you also... It's also how you elevate. Like, if you routinely fucking shit on your State Department sources... And you routinely fucking actually do journalism, like what you're supposed to do, which is, uh, I don't know, 
uh, come at this with a degree of skepticism, considering what the job of the State Department PR person is, which is lying to the media. That's what PR people do. They lie to the fucking media. Okay? They present information in a way that is incredibly fucking favorable. So when you're in the media, when you're a journalist, what you're supposed to do is recognize that. And instead of fucking writing everything they say without any sort of criticism, without any sort of analysis, without any sort of historical context, you're supposed to do journalism. You're supposed to investigate. But they don't want to do that. They just want to fucking copy paste whatever the fuck they said because that's good for the headlines. That's good for uh, the ratings. That's good for more circulation. That's good for more ad revenue. It's really fucked up. Because if you were to actually do journalism, next time, they would not give you the scoop. Okay? Next time, they'd be like, well, why the fuck would you... Why would we give you the fucking scoop? American media, for the most part, has uh, turned into just a, another way to do PR. That's how we arrived at this. That's how we arrive at, at what this dog shit media is fucking doing. Security concerns. As lead diplomats for our nations, we have a responsibility to make every effort for diplomacy to succeed, to leave no diplomatic stone unturned. If Russia is committed to diplomacy, we're presenting every opportunity for it to demonstrate that commitment. I have no doubt that the response to my remarks here today will be more dismissals from the Russian government about the United States stoking hysteria or that it has no plans to invade Ukraine. So let me make this simple. The Russian government can announce today with no qualification, equivocation, or deflection that Russia will not invade Ukraine. State it clearly, state it plainly to the world, and then demonstrate it by sending your troops, your tanks. Dude, that's so funny. Like, Putin has been saying an invasion into Ukraine would be awful, like would be gigantic, just a gigantic uh, catastrophe for everyone involved since day one. But he's been saying that since day one. He's like, listen, we're going to do a fucking show of force here. You don't want the smoke. But also at the same time, like, this would be smoke for us too. He's been saying that nonstop. Putin didn't say that. Yes, he did. You just never fucking heard it because you don't give a shit. And if he actually did, if you actually did hear him say it, you would say, why would you trust Putin? Why would you trust Putin? Why would you trust Putin? Okay, even if you don't trust Putin, then understand that, like, the reality is if Vladimir Putin was to engage in a counterinsurgency war in its fucking neighboring country with 44 million individuals that have gotten training from Canadian forces, American forces, that are getting a fuckload of weapons from America in general, then that would be a gigantic problem and that the Russian economy would suffer and it would be a war of attrition that would destroy the Russian economy. And the only people that would benefit from that would not be the Ukrainians, would not be the Russians, but actually just UK and the United States that are selling them the fucking guns after giving them the loans to sell them those fucking guns, Okay. And same with Canada as well. And I keep saying that. And then when I repeat that, you then turn around and say, well, duh, well, you know, if you consider that Putin is a violent, bloodthirsty madman, hell bent on destruction, maybe he just wants World War III. That's not how you do analysis. I've had this exact same conversation over and over again for the past fucking two months now. Shut the fuck up. You do not have clever or brilliant thoughts. You do not even have a unique thought. You are just repeating mindlessly what you saw on YouTube from another content creator, okay? You are a drone. You are a fucking NPC. You haven't brought any new insightful analysis to this story, okay? Fuck. Anyway. Your planes back to their barracks and hangars and sending your diplomats to the negotiating table. In the coming days, the world will remember that commitment. Or 
the refusal to make it. I yield the floor. All right, we've been listening just now to a very significant speech from the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken. Let me be clear, I am here today not to start a war, but to prevent one. Joining me now, let me start with David Sanger, CNN national security analyst, also correspondent for The New York Times. David, you were listening into this. What do you think of what the Secretary of State just said? Well, first, Kate, I'd say this was probably... I go to school for international relations. Most people in my class sound like dipshit chat takes makes me sad. Yes, dude. Unfortunately, the neoliberal machine, especially uh, when it comes to like foreign policy in most college campuses, is going to force feed you the State Department position over and over again. Actually, it's even more nefarious than that. They might actually show you how fucking devastating American State Department propaganda has been, like when the in the lead up to the Iraq War, for example, or uh, all these other major fuck ups that uh, the American government is engaged in historically. But then they'll turn around and say this time is different, and that's exactly what they said every other time that they fucked up. They always say this time is different. And you eat that shit up. You go, num, 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 please, please feed me this fucking same tired bullshit over and over again. But they say now we're progressive and on the right side of history. Yeah, I mean, that's what they said for Iraq, too. His anal your analysis is also a little twisted. He threatened that if his demands are not met, he'll start a nuclear war. No, dog. He said if Ukraine becomes a part of NATO and threatens the sovereignty of Russia, which is true, real and true, that's the whole point of fucking NATO, okay, then he will be goaded into having to take action against, uh, against Ukraine, which would then draw, as a consequence of Article 5, all of the rest of the fucking nations into war and that war would escalate to catastrophic results because these are wars between nuclear powers. It's true. The most important diplomatic moment that Secretary of State Blinken has had, uh, certainly in his time uh, as secretary and perhaps in his long career working for Joe Biden. He recognized right away and acknowledged indirectly. Yeah, I know. I listened to the uh, the Daily this morning. Barbaro literally said Afghanistan was a clear-cut justified inv invasion, which is, of course, that's why the NATO countries, uh, you know, got on board. Uh, and uh, Iraq was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Oh, old, old GWB, baby. He just misunderstood the assignment. He did not understand the assignment, sis. That's what happened. That this speech would be compared to Colin Powell's famous speech in 2003 when he laid out the evidence uh, that the Bush administration thought they had about Iraq. And that's why he used that line. I'm not here to start a war. I, I'm here to prevent one. And he basically challenged the Russians to prove the administration wrong by laying out this whole order of battle, saying that the Russians would begin with an incident, then moving on to uh, the cyber attacks, the missile attacks, and then the uh, invasion of the country. He was basically saying, prove me a liar. I'll be happy to take that rap. British strategy is just plain stupid, though. They keep showing how big and strong their army are next to the borders of their buffer countries. How are they not expecting those countries wanting to join a huge military coalition? Are you fucking kidding me? If they didn't do that flex, then America would be way, way more into uh, allowing 
Ukraine to join uh, NATO. America will never stop Ukraine and other countries from joining NATO. That's their fucking purpose. Unless there is a balancing counterforce, a serious enough threat that this country, if joining, if they join NATO and no longer are a neutral buffer zone, uh, will, uh, will not create uh, the all-out war. And then made this offer to meet uh, with Lavrov, uh, the Russian foreign minister. And I think he did that in this part of this effort to just keep the Russians talking. You know, inside the administration, Kate, they regard this as like a hostage negotiation in which Ukraine is the hostage. And they're just trying to keep the... Um, NATO, uh, NATO membership needs unanimous approval. Yeah, why do you think like why do you think fucking NATO countries w do not want Ukraine to be a part of NATO? Do you think it's because they don't meet the metrics? Do you think it's because like they don't have enough democracy? Is that what it is? Is that because that's bullshit? Okay. Oh, they don't meet the fucking standard that Poland is meeting. You know. Oh, there's too much corruption. That's why, right? No, motherfucker. It's because it's a buffer zone. It's supposed to be neutral. That's why. That's why it's not gonna happen. Just keep giving them guns and shit like they are a NATO country. And ultimately, it doesn't even fucking matter. It doesn't even... Uh, yeah, like Turkey. You know, Poland and Turkey are a blossoming uh, Western liberal democracies, but Ukraine isn't. You know what I mean? Russia and Belarus don't want a democratic nation on their border. <laughs> Yo! Yo! That's my favorite take! That's my favorite State Department take is that, like, they're afraid of Jeffersonian democracy, baby. That's right. That's right. Fe they fear. They fear. They fear democracy. <laughs> They hate us for our freedoms, brother. That's what, that's like the, the fucking liberal way. That's a blue way of saying they hate us because they hate us. They hate us because of our democracy and our, and our freedoms, brother. That's just you. You're just as hog-like as, you know, the, the fucking piece of shit, uh, uh, psychotic reactionary living in uh, one of these red states that you despise. You are the same person when it comes to, uh, American foreign policy, you just have like a, you know, more civilized way of approaching the subject matter. It's the difference between people being like, Iran, we need to fucking glass it. We need to glass Iran. They're Muslim man's out there. They're terrifying. Versus we need to glass Iran because the unfortunate reality is that they are whipping homosexuals there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. You don't want to glass Iran? Well, have you thought about the fact that there are, there are no rules there for gay people? Yeah. Didn't think so. Where did Finland go? They're hiding in the trees, brother. A fucking I'm just banning you we're watching a fucking dude literally on the United Nations Security Council admit that they lied about fucking Russia invading and they said they were tactically fucking lying and this dickhead comes in here just to say dude have this other YouTube content creator who I agree with because I watched his essay and you know that wasn't bad I don't think anyway let's continue for months and remember that while Russia has repeatedly derided our warnings and alarms as melodrama and nonsense, they have been steadily amassing more than 150,000. Okay, for the record, uh, there are 150,000 people, right? Like at, on, the, on the border, right? Yes, dude. It doesn't matter. There was fucking 90,000 last year. There was 80,000. There was 100,000 three years ago. There, that happens every year. It's military exercises that occur every year to do a fucking demonstration of how fucking terrible it would be if Ukraine was no longer a buffer zone, okay? Uh, 
2,000 troops on Ukraine's borders, as well as the capabilities to conduct a massive military assault. It isn't just us seeing this. Allies and partners see the same thing. And Russia hasn't only been hearing from us. The international chorus has grown louder. And louder. Please go back and wash your hands. I know. I love you. What? Didn't after you peed? I I Incredible. Backseating my fucking uh, habits here. If Russia doesn't invade Ukraine, then we will be relieved that Russia changed course and proved our predictions wrong. That would be a far better... On a nice note, I was able to point to the media blackout on the Ukrainian uh, telling NATO slash the U.S. to chill out in my media ethics class as an example of flaws in reporting. Your message is getting through. And then your teacher fucking gave you an F probably. Yeah, that's the wild part. Like, these fucking major news websites are never talking about the consequences or uh, ever talking about, like, what the Ukrainian administration is saying. Like, they're like, hey, we're worried about Russian incursion, but, like, can you guys calm the fuck down? We're trying to diplomatically deal with the situation, and you guys are really fucking this up. That has been the, the routine information coming out of Ukraine. Like, literally, over and over again, Ukrainian authorities that we so... We care about the Ukrainian people, right? We care about them, supposedly. That's why we have to fucking turn Ukraine into a one big uh, NATO base, right? And the Ukrainian authorities keep saying, dude, chill the fuck out. And it doesn't even matter. It's like, you never fucking hear that. It's like very rarely covered. You only hear about like the war drums, war drums, war drums. ...outcome than the course we're currently on. And we'll gladly accept any criticism that anyone directs at us. As President Biden said, this would be a war of choice. And if Russia makes that choice, we've been clear, along with allies and partners, that our response will be sharp and decisive. President Biden reiterated that forcefully earlier this week. There's another choice Russia can still make if there's any truth to its claim that is committed to diplomacy. Diplomacy is the only responsible way to resolve this crisis. An essential part of this is through implementation of the Minsk agreements, the subject of our session today. There are a series of commitments that Russia and Ukraine made under Minsk, with the OSCE and the Normandy format partners involved as well. If Russia is prepared to How are the media brought into the escalate deescalate strategy like they are just on the phone with Blinken? That's what I don't get mean dude sources dude sources how do you think journalists cover stories anonymous sources within the state department reach out to the journalists and say hey this is what's going on you should write about this and then those fucking journalists instead of being like hey this anonymous source said this we should probably try to fact check it or try to try to figure out where they're getting this information from literally turn around and go okay let's write it up without ever, ever considering how many times they have fucked up when they've done this exact same thing. Iraq is the uh, most prescient example. Sit with the Ukrainian government and work through the process of implementing these commitments. Our friends in France and Germany stand ready to convene senior level discussions in the Normandy format to settle these issues. Ukraine is ready for this, and we stand fully ready to support the parties. Progress toward resolving the Donbass crisis through the Minsk agreements can reinforce the broader discussions on security issues that we're prepared to engage in with Russia in coordination with our allies and partners. More than three weeks ago, we provided Russia with a paper that detailed concrete reciprocal steps that we can take in the near term to address our respective concerns and advance the collective security interests of Russia, the United States, and our European partners and allies. This morning, we received a response, which we're evaluating. Earlier today, I sent a letter to Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, proposing that we meet next week in Europe, following on our talks in recent weeks, to discuss the steps that we can take to resolve this crisis without conflict. We're also proposing meetings of the NATO-Russia Council 
and the OSCE Permanent Council. These meetings can pave the way for a summit of key leaders in the context of de-escalation to reach understandings on our mutual Yes, it is access journalism. It's like when the local reporters print what cops want them to because doing what cops or your State Department contracts want means they'll give you more scoops in the future. It's careerism in an unrewarding profession. But it's how you also... It's also how you elevate. Like, if you routinely fucking shit on your State Department sources and you routinely fucking actually do journalism, like what you're supposed to do, which is, uh, I don't know, uh, come at this with a degree of skepticism considering what the job of the State Department PR person is, which is lying to the media. That's what PR people do. They lie to the fucking media. Okay? They present information in a way that is incredibly fucking favorable. So when you're in the media, when you're a journalist, what you're supposed to do is you recognize that, and instead of fucking writing everything they say without any sort of criticism, without any sort of analysis, without any sort of historical context, you're supposed to do journalism. You're supposed to investigate. But they don't want to do that. They just want to fucking copy-paste whatever the fuck they said because that's good for the headlines. That's good for uh, the ratings. That's good for more circulation. That's good for more ad revenue. It's really fucked up. Because if you were to actually do journalism, next time, they would not give you the scoop. Okay? Next time, they'd be like, well, why the fuck would you... Why would we give you the fucking scoop? American media, for the most part, has uh, turned into just a, another way to do PR. That's how we arrived at this. That's how we arrive at, at what this uh, dog shit media is fucking doing. Security concerns. As lead diplomats for our nations, we have a responsibility to make every effort for diplomacy to succeed, to leave no diplomatic stone unturned. If Russia is committed to diplomacy, we're presenting every opportunity for it to demonstrate that commitment. <laughs> I have no doubt that the response to my remarks here today will be more dismissals from the Russian government about the United States stoking hysteria or that it has no plans to invade Ukraine. So let me make this simple. The Russian government can announce today, with no qualification, equivocation, or deflection, that Russia will not invade Ukraine. State it clearly, state it plainly to the world, and then demonstrate it by sending your troops, your tanks. Dude, this is so funny. Like. Putin has been saying an invasion into Ukraine would be awful, like would be gigantic, just a gigantic uh, catastrophe for everyone involved since day one. Like he's been saying that since day one. He's like, listen, we're going to do a fucking show of force here. You don't want the smoke, but also at the same time, like this would be smoke for us too. He's been saying that nonstop. Putin didn't say that. Yes, he did. You just never fucking heard it because you don't give a shit. And if he actually did, if you actually did hear him say it, you would say, why would you trust Putin? Why would you trust Putin? Why would you trust Putin? Okay, even if you don't trust Putin, then understand that like the reality is if Vladimir Putin was to engage in a counterinsurgency war in its fucking neighboring country with 44 million individuals that have gotten training from Canadian forces, American forces that are getting a fuckload of weapons from America in general, then that would be a gigantic problem and that the Russian economy would suffer and there would be a war of attrition that would destroy the Russian economy. And the only people that would benefit from that would not be the Ukrainians, would not be the Russians, but actually just UK and the United States that are selling them the fucking guns after giving them the loans to sell them those fucking guns, okay? And same with Canada as well. And I keep saying that. And then when I repeat that, you then turn around and say, well, duh, duh, well, you know, if you consider that Putin is a violent, bloodthirsty madman, hell bent on destruction, maybe he just wants World War III. That's not how you do analysis. I've had this exact same conversation over and over again for the past fucking two months now. Shut the fuck up. You do not have clever or brilliant thoughts. You do not even have a unique thought. You are just repeating mindlessly what you saw 
on YouTube from another content creator. Okay. You are a drone. You are a fucking NPC. You haven't brought any new insightful analysis to this story. Okay. Fuck. Anyway. Your planes back to their barracks and hangars and sending your diplomats to the negotiating table. In the coming days, the world will remember that commitment or the refusal to make it. I yield the floor. Yeah, благодарю. All right, we've been listening just now to a very significant speech from the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken. Let me be clear, I am here today not to start a war, but to prevent one. Joining me now, let me start with David Sanger, CNN national security analyst, also correspondent for The New York Times. David, you were listening into this. What do you think of what the Secretary of State just said? Well, first, Kate, I'd say this was probably... I go to school for international relations. Most people in my class sound like dipshit chat takes makes me stag. Yes, dude. Unfortunately, the neoliberal machine, especially uh, when it comes to like foreign policy in most college campuses, is going to force feed you the State Department position over and over again. Actually, it's even more nefarious than that. They might actually show you how fucking devastating American State Department propaganda has been, like when the in the lead up to the Iraq War, for example, or uh, all these other major fuck ups that uh, the American government is engaged in historically. But then they'll turn around and say this time is different, and that's exactly what they said every other time that they fucked up. They always say this time is different. And you eat that shit up. You go, num, 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 please, please feed me this fucking same tired bullshit over and over again. But they say, now we're progressive and on the right side of history. Yeah, I mean, that's what they said for Iraq, too. His anal your analysis is also a little twisted. He threatened that if his demands are not met, he'll start a nuclear war. No, dog. He said if Ukraine becomes a part of NATO and threatens the sovereignty of Russia, which is true, real and true, that's the whole point of fucking NATO, okay, then he will be goaded into having to take action against, uh, against Ukraine, which would then draw, as a consequence of Article 5, all of the rest of the fucking nations into war and that war would escalate to catastrophic results because these are wars between nuclear powers. It's true. The most important diplomatic moment that Secretary of State Blinken has had, uh, certainly in his time uh, as secretary and perhaps in his long career working for Joe Biden. He recognized right away and acknowledged indirectly. Yeah, I know. I listened to the uh, the Daily this morning. Barbaro literally said Afghanistan was a clear-cut justified inv invasion, which is, of course, that's why the NATO countries, uh, you know, got on board. Uh, and uh, Iraq was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Oh, old, old GWB, baby. He just misunderstood the assignment. He did not understand the assignment, sis. That's what happened. That this speech would be compared to Colin Powell's famous speech in 2003 when he laid out the evidence uh, that the Bush administration thought they had about Iraq. And that's why he used that line. I'm not here to start a war. I, I'm here to prevent one. And he basically challenged the Russians 
to prove the administration wrong by laying out this whole order of battle, saying that the Russians would begin with an incident, then moving on to uh, the cyber attacks, the missile attacks, and then the uh, invasion of the country. He was basically saying, prove me a liar. I'll be happy to take that rap. British and strategy is just plain stupid, though. They keep showing how big and strong their army are next to the borders of their buffer countries. How are they not expecting those countries wanting to join a huge military coalition? Are you fucking kidding me? If they didn't do that flex, then America would be way, way more into uh, allowing Ukraine to join uh, NATO. America will never stop Ukraine and other countries from joining NATO. That's their fucking purpose. Unless there is a balancing counterforce, a serious enough threat that this country, if joining, if they join NATO and no longer are a neutral buffer zone, uh, it will, uh, it will not create uh, the all out war. And then made this offer to meet uh, with Lavrov, uh, the Russian foreign minister. And I think he did that in this part of this effort to just keep the Russians talking. You know, inside the administration, Kate, they regard this as like a hostage negotiation in which Ukraine is the hostage. And they're just trying to keep the... Um, NATO, uh, NATO membership needs unanimous approval. Yeah. Why do you think like, why do you think fucking NATO countries w do not want Ukraine to be a part of NATO? Do you think it's because they don't meet the metrics? Do you think it's because like they don't have enough democracy? Is that what it is? Is that because that's bullshit? Okay. Oh, they don't meet the fucking standard that Poland is meeting, you know? Oh, there's too much corruption. That's why, right? No, motherfucker. It's because it's a buffer zone. It's supposed to be neutral. That's why. That's why it's not going to happen. Just keep giving them guns and shit like they are a NATO country. And ultimately, it doesn't even fucking matter. It doesn't even... Uh, yeah, like Turkey. You know, Poland and Turkey are a blossoming uh, Western liberal democracies, but Ukraine isn't. You know what I mean? Russia and Belarus don't want a democratic nation on their border. <laughs> Yo! Yo! That's my favorite take! That's my favorite State Department take, is that, like, they're afraid of Jeffersonian democracy, baby. That's right. That's right. Fe they fear. They fear. They fear democracy. <laughs> They hate us for our freedoms, brother. That's what, that's like the, the fucking liberal way. That's a blue way of saying they hate us because they hate us. They hate us because of our democracy and our, and our freedoms, brother. That's just you. You're just as hog-like as, you know, the, the fucking piece of shit, uh, uh, psychotic reactionary living in uh, one of these red states that you despise. You are the same person when it comes to, uh, American foreign policy, you just have like a, you know, more civilized way of approaching the subject matter. It's the difference between people being like, Iran, we need to fucking glass it. We need to glass Iran. They're Muslim man's out there. They're terrifying. Versus we need to glass Iran because the unfortunate reality is that they are whipping homosexuals there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. You don't want to glass Iran? Well, have you thought about the fact that there are, there are no rules there for gay people? Yeah. Didn't think so. Where did Finland go? They're hiding in the trees, brother. <laughs> 